shows up on white better than darker colors. If you did this on top of a nude, it won't come out the same color because the nude background is a little different. I know that the black works on top of nude very well. I'm gonna do a few samples first. So just one coat of white. So for your, if you're doing this on a client, you'd have to paint that nail white. I recommend painting it white and not actually doing um, white powder. White powder sometimes not as white as white gel polish. You guys notice? And sometimes it might make cause yellowing. You run that issue if you guys are yellowing. It's a very thin coat. I don't want it to bubble. Um, I have this little mini lamp here because I don't have my other lamp is out of battery. So hopefully this mini one will do. Um, mini one's pretty good for you sealing stones and stuff like that. They're not really good for like actual curing. So I don't recommend doing that for clients. These mini lamps you have here. I have that in my store also. It's just for you to practice and whatever. I'm um, not for you to use to cure at your client's nails per se. So let's do four samples first. And I'll do a black one too, because we do have a white ink. My white ink is actually really, really, really good. Let's give that 60 seconds. Uh, um, let's paint one or, one or two black ones, just to have it ready. Let's give me some time here. So you guys can see some of the samples I've didn't done before. That's ink marbling, very vibrant, um, very good stuff. Um, fairly easy to use. I teach this in my classes also for my students. Oh, which reminds me, I should definitely tell them to tune in. Hold on, give me one second. This is my students to tune in. Copy link. Just in case they uh, missed it or, woo. I'm sorry. This is like last minute thing. Um, all this is now, this, all this ink set, I'll show you guys when I open it. It's available to everybody, 20% off, store wide. So pretty much when you check out, everything's 20% off. Second, that's good for my future students to have them prepare for the class. I only have I only have one class open now. It's going to be um, Kansas City. If you're from Kansas City, definitely tune in. Uh, this you know I'm filling up that class right now, so me and Tino are going to be in Kansas City. So don't miss out. I don't want to go. I don't want to be in Kansas City and all of a sudden I know where. Hey, coming back to Kansas. If you're in Kansas and around the surrounding area, you want to take a class with me and Tino, um, acrylics class and also a design class, feel free to DM and get your seat because once we fill up the seats, we're pretty much done. And that'll be the last, uh, that'll be January. It'll be in January. All right, that's enough. Those who missed it, missed it. Uh, any more classes in here? Okay, that's good. All right, so once we cure this, we're gonna matte top coat. I like to use a rubbery matte. Um, for a lot of you guys that are using matte top coats that are kind of like um, smooth. I don't know if you guys ever had that. Let me, let me get into the comment section here. Um, hey, 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 hey. So I don't know if you guys have the, the matte where it's smooth. You don't want a smooth surface when you do, we're doing ink marbling. You want actually a, a nice rubbery. So my matte's actually very nice for that. Fairly easy. One thin coat, you have to mat it, and I'll show you why, guys why later. If you don't mat it, it's not gonna work as well. It's part of the, the process of doing this design. You have to mat it, okay guys? No Ryans, no Jacob, Jacobs, just mat. So do four samples, we'll go from there. Oh my God, you hear that? That's a little monster. She should be sleeping. So let's put this aside. Let's take a look at the ink itself. So it comes with 12 colors. You got white, black, 
um, this is misplaced. A neon, neon, you see the, the pigment? Neon yellow, um, you got neon pink, purple, orange, green, blue, got like an aqua, brown, and an orange. Some good fall combinations here. Okay, that should be good. Let's cure this black one real quick. Okay. Hello, hello, Bella. Hello, everybody. Just join. Okay, so I'm going to start with the black one just to show you guys the black pigment. I wish um, it cured better, but it couldn't cure the corners. So first, I'm going to take some my dampen dish. And I'll put some acetone. You have to use acetone. Alcohol works, but I think acetone works the best. And for that, I'm going to take out my 3D oval. If you guys haven't had my brush collection yet, definitely try it. It's gonna be one of the best brushes. I have seven brushes. You buy the bundle, you get one free. This is an oval. See how it's rounded? A little bit long, right? There's a little sealant there. Another side is the 3D for 3D flowers. But I'm using the oval side this time. I am going to take my black. So one of the issues I used to run into when I use other people, Ban you, uh, Emmy, uh, Emmy, you go to nail-shop.com and your M is 20% off. Um, so you can get this, I think, uh, for a pretty good deal. Um, this product will last you forever, guys. It's not, unless you spill it, it's not gonna ever have any issues. So here we go. Please go ahead and hit that share button too also so people that never use this product before, I really want to show nail techs that this, there's products like this out there. Um, this is a black ink. And I'm just gonna apply it, dabbing on. You don't have to, I like to apply my ink like from one end to the other. I don't like disconnects because I wanna connect everything together. So now I'm gonna use my brush and I'm gonna be able to dab it. And ideally, the. So one of the issues with black that I ran to other companies before I made mine is that it turns, it makes the white yellow. This black doesn't so you kind of when you dab it you see how the it creates like a a ripple don't use too much monomer or just drip all over the place so i i really am not like when i was using my other machine it looked a lot better but this this will still work because um i'm using this mini lamp just for curing purposes not curing uh that great but for demo purposes i think this is good so what I'm doing is I'm creating like kind of break lines, just back and forth, back and forth. The more you clear it out, the more crisp those um, marble lines look. As you can see, I don't, you don't have any uh, yellow spots. Generally, sometimes with black, you get like a yellow, yellow spot. I really hated that when I was using, uh, before I had my own ink, I was like, ugh. This time, when I, whenever I have my own ink, I'm gonna definitely make sure it doesn't have any yellow spots. So this is just me playing with it. You can definitely do your own style, but I really recommend like not doing too much. And the reason why we like doing the, um, that we do the, uh, the matted, you see how it kind of blurs out and it, it blurs out here. If this is too smooth, it, it will just, it won't have that blend. So this is generally what ink marbling is. And then when you hit it with the top coat, where's my top coat? There it is. Money back guarantee on this top coat. Yes, see, it would just bring everything out. And the ink is already solidified in there. And it gives you kind of like a marble look, like a marble floor, a smoky marble look. Now, if you guys noticed when I was using my other lamp, I was getting a little bit better consistency. This is from when I did a demo the other day. And that's with, that's with the black. I'm using acetone. And you can do a variety of things with that too. I mean, it's not ended yet. I mean, sometimes, you know, with, uh, with black marble, I like to use a little bit of gold. Gold actually really, um, my, Gold gel pot. If you guys don't have this, you should definitely take advantage of the 20% off. Um, it's not like a glitter gold. It's very fine. 
So it gives you the ability to do fine lines. I'm gonna use my 15 brush. I should have done this before I top coated, but it's okay. Now you can add a little bit, like why it's, I like to tell my students $5 more, you know, trying to make extra money. You can add gold veins to it. I like, see this dark spot right here? I'm gonna start here. I don't wanna overtake my, um, too much of my, um, my marble away. I will follow the marble line, but I'm not gonna try to do too much to take it away. I'm adding like a kind of like a accent break line. I'll probably add another one here. See this gold is not like um it's not like a flaky gold. It's like a actual gold, so it gives you that nice definition. And you can cure it. So usually you do that before you top coat and then afterwards you top coat everything. Okay, I wish I saw this two days ago. My ink look more like shit. <laughs> it depends on the products too. You guys gotta understand the products. Sometimes your, the product might not be uh, something I can practice at school. Now, thank you, you're welcome. Can you do a demo with your liner, your gel liner? I brought the set that's uh, well. Yes, I will. Actually, I have it right here. I'll show you guys how some do some sweater. Didn't it? this is what she's talking about right here, guys? This is the twenty four set with the gel liner. This is actually a really good deal if you got this during the Black Friday sale. Twenty four pieces. Oh, got some demos in here. This is what I did. Sweater nails. All using this. No gel polish. So I'll do that later after I, I, I finish with the ink. So stick around. All right, um, let's do one of my favorite two combinations is this pink and this blue. This is the pink? This pink and this blue. This will give me purple. This, but I don't have to use this. Probably one of my favorite combinations. And remember, my ink is a little bit different from others. You guys will notice right away when you get it. It's completely different. The way it's made, it's very neon and pigmented, okay? Ooh, excited for this. I close it after every usage. If you don't close it, <laughs> don't spill it. Hey, thank you, Jessica. Trying to sweat, yeah, this sweat else for you. So when I add this blue, I get a nice deep purple. You see that? I kind of overlap them. I don't mind overlapping them. Just put them over each other. Then I do the same thing. I'll get my acetone. And when I dab in, I start mixing, mixing the colors. Oh, a little too much there. It's okay. I recover. I still go the same general direction that I would go if I were to, you know, where I apply the ink. So I'm just gonna go on the outside a little bit. A little too much acetone there. As you can see, I'm forcing the colors into the middle, creating kind of a purple, pink, blue, Still beautiful. I don't mind dabbing out here. Oop, ah, too much. I keep forgetting this brush is a lot bigger than most brushes, so it picks up a lot more acetone, so I gotta be careful. This is my longer brush from the different uh, different um, series. I'm gonna fix this up real quick. I'm gonna connect this back up here just by pushing the ink up. Give myself a nice ink marbling line there. Oh yeah. Down here, I'll probably blend it out a little bit too. Get that pink out. Break in this blue a little bit. You guys see the general direction of the marbling? See that pink right here? I don't want that too pink. So I can just dab it a little bit and it'll kind of blend out here. 
Oh, wow, that actually turned out really well. With this, with this product, you gotta be careful because sometimes you can overthink and overdo things. A lot of my students, I, they run into that. And I say, hey, don't do it. Like, if you like it, just stop, just stop, you know? And just, you know, add, add something to accentuate it. And I like, this is my 25 millimeter. It's the longest, longest uh, liner brush and you'll see why this is this length for a reason, you know? At that point, just stop. You know, don't do too much because the more, the more you remove, the worse it gets. So, you know, just do some nice outlining. So this brush, for those of you guys that are struggling with long lines, straight lines, the brush does its job for you. I use it as a ruler. See that? I just drag it and I lay the brush down. See that? How the brush just lays. It gives me the ability to be steady. You would not use a short brush to draw long lines, right? Because it, it wouldn't be as steady. So I'll use a shorter brush for up here because I don't really need that long line. Doing the cuticle area. Kind of giving like a little nice gold frame. That's all you really need to have a really nice design. I, I want to say this is beginner to intermediate design. Um, you know, beginners can actually learn this really fast. And intermediate as in like um, sometimes if you overthink it, it might be harder than it looks. So just be careful with that. I feel like we're our own worst enemy. Sometimes we do a great design and guess what? We get to, we overthink it and then we, we try to do too much and then we ruin our design, right? You like the new brush of Sally? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, yes, you still have, oh, yes, unique. We still have spots in KC. If you're in the KC area, me and Tina will be there. You're one chance, you're in the Midwest, Kansas City area. Don't miss it because if I go to Kansas City and Missouri and then I'm done with that class and you guys mention me, come to Missouri. I'm like, oh, you guys are you're killing me. Okay, the class is about half full. So take advantage of it. DM me. You'll be able to see Tino there. We'll be teaching acrylics and design. Oh, guys, you know how I messed up a little bit earlier, but look at that. Just look at it. Like... That on all white set, even on a blue set with one white nail uh, or a pink set or something like a purple set, it really sets off. Let's cure it. So I promised you guys I was going to do a black sample, but I have to redo this because it kind of crinkled up on me. Let me do another. Where are the tips? I'll probably do some stone placement too if you guys want to hang around. Because after the holidays, you know, you guys probably work your ass off. Time to chill a little bit. You know, watch Nail Dad do some demos. Hit that share button. Follow my TikTok, please. I love all the interaction. I might do actually a TikTok giveaway. So you're following. You don't want to miss that. Yeah, a TikTok giveaway sounds like a good idea, right? I painted too thick earlier. And this mini lamp's not a, a big of a curing lamp. Okay, let's take these out. This is my top coat. Cures very nice, non-cleanse. Means that it's gonna be nice and shiny and just very quick, very easy. You can do so much with this, so much. And there's so many other colors too. My favorite combination would probably be this brown and this black. Where's that black? Right here. These two colors right here. Oh, this is blue. These two colors make such a nice, nice background. Do you have to have any tips on thinning out gel paints? It's cold here and my paint tends to thicken. Um, if it's cold, I really recommend keeping your uh, gel polishes in an area where it's close to the windows. Um, Generally, 74 degrees is when the polish sets. A lot of times you guys put your stuff near the windows and if it's cold, and yes, it's gonna, it's gonna thicken up. I, I just recommend just putting it at room temperature or with heating up with your hands. I don't like putting stuff into, um, I don't like putting stuff into uh, gel polishes. You wanna do that so much until you ruin it. So uh, then I'm gonna matte this. Actually, I wanted to try one of this 
non-matted. I did a matte before. I'm gonna try it with a clear. I'm gonna try the, the smooth surface because the white. I wanna see the smooth surface. A little bit of the ah, dang it. The black didn't cover that where I touched it going in like an idiot. Let's paint that. Let's cure that again. While we that cures, we'll do another white sample. So this is my favorite one. It's this black and this brown. Like this is like the fall ink of fall ink. And see, I, I do generally the same pattern. This time I'll probably change the pattern up a little bit. I'll do like an upside one like that maybe. This brown is so nice. Let me show you guys what I mean. Yes, it's a darker color, but it actually really sets off the design. Here we go. Use my, don't use any brush that's like squared. You want like a round brush, like a round tip like this, because if it's squared, it's gonna give like sharp crease marks. I'm gonna dab on the paper towel, remove the excess. So this brown and this black are probably the same family, but it gives a nice rustic look. Those guys are like the fall, like some nice, black leaves on this it look really nice and you just kind of play with it i'll be honest with you i just kind of dab it and then i start working from there i don't really overthink it the moment you overthink this 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 design it actually becomes harder and harder because you try to be perfect this is not a design that for you to be perfect that's not like ink marbling when you work it, it's not perfect because you really don't have any control you do have some control but a lot of it you have to utilize the natural of the ink you know, being able to be broken and creating these little veins. That's gonna look amazing when you hit that with a top coat. Just play with it. And generally, you know, you, you gotta make sure you add enough of it. Cause remember, we're, we are removing the ink so if you don't add enough, guess what? It's gonna look too light. I see a lot of people on the issue where it looks really light. And you want like a dark. But like I said, you can always move more. I kinda like to blend out the colors a little bit to make sure it's not as harsh. Give myself some big, big areas thin to thick to thin. I'll thin this out here at the tail end, see that? Just a little dab it, thin out the tail end. And I'm done. And I'm gonna go ahead and do some gold. That's just me demoing. You can definitely spend some more time with a specific design that you, you really, really like. So this is a dark spot here. So I'm gonna dab more gold there and start there for my, I'm um, kind of like my break lines. Ooh, that's a lot. Kind of pull away on my brush to give it thinner lines. too much I don't want to take over the ink may have done too much here but hey who can complain about gold right let's cure that let's top coat this I want to try this with top coat with the white this time my top coat is very medium consistency so you don't have to worry about it running on the edges one nice thin coat will cure really nicely for you a lot of top coats, you guys run into issues where the edges are a little bit, um, you lose your shape. It's because the top coat is too thin. And when you're painting, it actually changes consistency. So now this is cured. Let's hit it with the top coat. This is when the client cash app just goes ching, ching, ching. You'll probably have better results because I'm using a mini lamp and I'm not using my gel lamp. So the, the mat and the clear is not curing properly. But as you can see, even then, we still have very good results. 
did cover a little bit too much of the ink marbling, but I think I'm gonna do that sample again. Or I'll probably do another um, very. So, my black is done. This is the white. For a lot of you guys that like the smoky look, this white is the perfect consistency. Perfect consistency. Over at Nude will be beautiful. Yes, a nude would be beautiful too for the black and that, yes. Actually, I'll do that one. This is like a smoky white. Mmm, I like it, but I don't like it better than on top of a um, matte. Let me try. Okay, so this is on top of a clear. Watch when I, I'm gonna redo this on top of a mat, and I'll show you guys the difference. I want to try it, because I wanted to see what it, it would look like, because someone asked me to try that. So, I am gonna do mat, stick to the basics. You can see this design is very simple and quick to do. It doesn't really require that much that long to do. Um, I have a bunch of samples here from before for those of you guys who are just joining. Like, this is from the difference of the colors. I want to move on to my artist gel. This is with my, my proper gel lamp. So when you have a proper gel lamp, the white and the matte will cure properly. And this is using more of the colors for you guys. See the difference? When you have the right gel lamp, um, this is just a temporary gel lamp I'm using because my other one's out of battery. I don't have the charge cable with me. But this is what it'll look like. See the, the marble look? The definition? That's what we're looking for. And you have a, a big gel lamp that will cure the white, cure the matte properly. You're able to do, but even then, I'm still able to produce stuff like this fluidly. <laughs> Let's show the white real quick before we end this. All right, this is enough. It didn't cure the corners because like I said, it's, it's sitting on a table. So it, I want to show you guys the difference in the, the smoky look. A lot of guys don't want to do smoky. That's just one coat. And we're also going to go overlap with another coat. It just gives you like a, like a, like a nice smoky texture for a lot of you guys. Different layers of smoke. And you actually can lay pigment on top of this and do this sample right here. Oh, this is one sample. Where's the, where's the other one? With my pigment. I'm not taking out the pigment this time because this is way too much work right here. You just apply pigment right over this, and then you just ombre the pigment. And you have that smoky pigment. You see how the different layers and texture, how it's lighter and darker. This is before they had to use, um, you have to use mix uh, white gel and acetone to make that and use a brush, but now it's already in a bottle for you. It saves you so many steps. When we taught this design in our advanced class, we, we had the students mix white gel polish with acetone, make the milky consistency. I, a lot of my students still are traumatized about that till this day. Now I've had the product to have it already settled for you right here. You know, you don't have to do that process. So my, our job is to come up with products to make your, job, your life a lot easier. But for this purpose, I'm just gonna do marbling. White marble. All my students are like, oh my gosh, I remember having to do all that. Yes, a lot of my students are definitely traumatized by make, ma making the milky con milky white consistency. <laughs> I'm sorry, students, that this product can come sooner, but it's here now. So kind of a back and forth. I want like nice visible lines. 
when the topical comes out, I'll bring everything out. But since earlier, I was applying in a different form, and this definitely didn't last well as. So this is what this is supposed to look like. But like I said, this is with me using the other lamp. So that's the process right there. Get a smoke look. Um, you can actually apply it and then make like a skull, like a smoky skull look too. It's actually really cool. You can do a lot of things with that. All right, let's clean this up. We Let's go to the artist gel before I end the live. I promise I will do some samples with artist gel. Um, but like I said, ink marbling, one of my favorites to do. A lot of colors here, 12 colors. You can make a variety of different combinations. Just make sure you know the color wheel, okay? Some colors don't mix well together. Understand that. So know your color wheel so you don't mix a bunch of colors. This brown is actually really nice. Dun, dun. Okay, let's put this away. And this is the neon ink. And next, let's put this on the side. Let's put this on the side. Comes with replacement brushes in there too. All right, let's, let's clear some of this out. We're gonna move on to our sweater. Sweater. This is the 24 piece set. This is gel polished base. Remember this, okay? Oh, my demo from Stone Demo. Gel polished base. So it's treated like gel polished. For a lot of you guys that are waiting for the, for a lot of you guys that want to go to the advanced class, this is one of the advanced designs we teach. I teach specifically. It's called Blooming Rose. That for another time, I can't show that because also my 3D crack skin. <laughs> Just teasers. Just teasing. So, 24 piece set, you pretty much every color. This is gel polish base. Treat it like gel polish, please. Um, do not treat it like art gel, very thin layers. Yes, um, the smoke. Kick my butt when I first learned it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Jessica. So, um, take your client's nails, and you'll realize that this brush has many usage. I'm using that same brush I did earlier. Okay. Now, let's do. A nude, a light nude. Actually, let's do a blue, Tiffany blue, Tiffany blue. So before you just have to run and grab what, you have to run and grab what? Grab different uh, gel polishes. Now all the gel polish in your fingertips. So I'm gonna use the same polish because when you do sweater designs, you wanna use the same polish. So I'm gonna apply a little bit of polish here. This polish is not like regular polish. It's not that thick. It's not that thin, you see that? It stays consistent, but it's still a gel polish. So I'll be able to paint this in with my 3D oval brush. Or if you have my, my collection, I prefer using the flat. And this will give me a nice layer. You can actually paint like, like how you paint with a paintbrush, see? And you see one coat will give it nice coverage. You don't need it to be that thick. Remember, this is the base layer of your sweater. Look how nice and pigment that is. You want that color? Well, there's a whole collection of them. So every color in here, you can use the same transition. Um, this rose right here that I taught, this is using the red from this, this collection. And you can use this for this also. Gel marbling, variety of things. But sweater is very popular right now. It's the in, everybody's doing it. So, of course, um, I like to matte. I see a lot of people use this, but they don't matte it. They, they, they use it as a shiny to each their own. I feel like a sweater matted looks a lot better. It gives that sweater vibe to it. Um, shiny doesn't really give that texture you're looking for. It's too off balance. This will give you the texture you want.
because everything is half, uh, not half off, 20% off on the website right now until Monday. <clears throat> After Monday, and that's done. Mm -mm. Give that another 10 seconds. And I'm going to use the same brush from here. For a lot of you guys that are struggling with control, switch to a longer brush. Just use a gel polish on a palette to do your sweater design. But for this purpose, I'm going to use the same brush. Um, it's, this is a little bit more difficult to control this brush because it's shorter. But if you if you have the basic know-how, you can do it. If you have to switch over, just put a little polish onto a, 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 a art palette tray. Uh, and then you just <clears throat> use that. Gives you more control. So now it's matted and I'm using the same color. A lot of you don't realize these boxes are actually used. You can use this to put your, if you can't hold it in the hand, is that positioned really well and it just stays there. <laughs> so I'll do it just a generic sweater design down the middle. For me, I like to do the sweater design first. I'll add my thickness later. Okay, I like to do the design first. And like I said, this is not a uh, regular gel polish. This is a medium consistency gel polish. So it does stay, it's not gonna bleed out on you. You may not be able to see as well. But I'm gonna draw my design in first, then I'll add my thickness later. And for a lot of you guys that are having issues doing this, and you can cure as you go, so that if you mess up, you can just clean up everything else. So I'm putting in my pattern first. I see a lot of people do this design, this uh, this design, and they leave it like this, and then they they they're done. They sprinkle on. No, this is not supposed to be this thin. You want texture for this design, okay? So one straight line down. Definitely a lot easier if you use a liner brush, but for this demo purpose, I'm gonna use what I have here. So it shows you it can be done. You don't have to have a bunch of other stuff coming out. Then I'll do little swoops here. Just so I can see my design. And yes, you can do it thicker in the beginning is fine too. I like doing like this just in case I mess up. I don't have to take off as much stuff. So now I'm gonna come back up and I'm gonna add more. See now I have more gel polish here, and I'm gonna go back through it, and I'm gonna add more to it. But I already, I already know where my line is, you see that? And you see how the gel polish does not even move? It's not bleeding out, it's not blending with other lines, it stays, that's the reason why this gel, this, this product, I made it like this. So I'm kinda just adding a little bit more polish, and it stays. A lot of you guys have this product on Amazon. Yes, it's a lot cheaper. No, is it as good as mine? Definitely not. You get what you pay for, okay? So yes, a lot of the Amazon stuff is either too thick or too runny or doesn't work, doesn't cure at all. This is what you pay for, quality stuff. I always said that if I'm gonna sell anything, I better be able to use it too. I'm not gonna sell you something that I, that I don't wanna use myself. Let's add a little bit more polish here, just slightly. I always tell people, you want to sell things, make sure that you use it too. People need to see you use it also. Okay? No one wants to buy something that you wouldn't use yourself or you don't know how to use or you can't show them how to use. I feel like in this day and age, it's not about the money. It's about, is this person going to spend $100, $200? Are they going to be able to do four or five sets and make this money back? Or not. So, see the texture's all there. As you can see, I just work with this without even curing it. And look, the gel polish stays, okay? Now we take a clear powder out. Any clear will work, it doesn't matter. And we're gonna scoop on this If you haven't followed my TikTok in the future, I'll actually be doing a lot more TikTok tutorials on TikTok. I have a team that's gonna be doing it on there too. So for you guys, it's Nailed Ass Studios TikTok. Please follow and show some love on my content. I really appreciate it, it's all I ask for. This demo, this time I'm spending it for you is free for you to watch. 
I don't have to pay anything, but I do appreciate some, some love on my TikTok. And then you care. And then you're done. Please, I implore you, if you're doing this design, you are not going to top coat, matte top coat, or do anything to this after it's done. It is done. It's, it's going to soak into that gel polish, and it's going to stay that texture. You're going to mess it up. You're going to mess it up if you, you know, you're going to mess it up because it's, it's going to make all that work look really bad. Like, please, do not top coat. Do not do anything to this when it's done. It's done. It's done, okay? That's it. I'm actually going to do one more, and I'm going to do stone placement before I end this live. I love you guys. So once it's cured, I like to have a little smaller brush on the side to dust off stuff. I don't like using the same brush I used to dust off. Oh my goodness. This gets to all the edges. A lot of times you don't remove all, everything. It kind of crystallizes. I would like to, I would like to recommend you guys to be careful when it comes to black and dark colors, neon colors, because the white will show up really pigmented. But look at that. Tell me your client's not going to pay you $5 a nail, $10 a nail for this. They will. It's very cured. Yes, there's a texture to it. Yes, you know, stuff can get stuck to, but it's actually very nice and smooth. Um, it's a very trendy design now, this holiday. Um, you can do a variety. You can go to Kmart. You can look at your old sweaters, look for patterns. There's sort of many patterns on the internet you can you look for up for. I like this pattern. It's a very generic, a very uh, easy pattern to do. There's a lot more harder patterns. Okay, so I'll do one more. This one, I'm gonna do actually a French, a nude and French. So let's do a nude first. And I'm gonna do stone placement this one. This one, I'm gonna end, I'm gonna end the live with this. It's like a baby nude. Ah, look at me, I'm so freaking messy, man. Oh, I just paste it over myself, whatever. So, oh, like I said, this is like gel polish. I'm gonna paint it in, that's my base layer, my nude. And I'm going to cure it. I'm gonna do a French with a black. And then I'm gonna sweater it, ooh. Hold on, hold on, shut the front door. Let me think, let me think. Brown, nude and brown, nude and brown. Nude brown and gold rhinestones, yes. This is the brown, burgundy, burgundy brown. Yeah, like a dark brown. Brown on nude. That's what's up, that's what's up. This is a fall one. Look at this brown. In this collection, I gave you guys a light nude, dark nude, and a brown. So if you guys like doing squirrel designs, but we're not doing squirrels right now. That's like, you know, in the spring. Do a deep French. Give me a little more polish on here so I can paint it on. Clean my brush. Rinse and repeat. I actually made a mistake because I dipped this brush in acetone so now it's kind of breaking down my, my gel polish. Oh, for demo purposes, just pretend this is fully pigmented. Go we'll back to it, make this nice and brown. Beautiful. Beautiful. Earlier, I cleaned my brush with acetone, and what that did was it started mixing in with my, 
my brown, so it left like light spots here and there, but I'm sweatering this anyway, so I'm not too worried. I'll just add a little more polish here and I'll, I'll blend it in. Mm -hmm. Make sure I have this brush nice and dry. Let's do that again. There you go. Okay, now I'm going to cure it. Done with that. I need the new drill. You got me, got me a medical 35K. I love it, thanks for the tip. Yes, I'm always down to help. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. Oh, I didn't know the stars would turn on. I usually turn it off. I haven't had the stars option turn on in a while. It's Facebook's way of letting you guys support the streamer or something like that, but appreciate that. So, now I'm gonna mat everything. And I'm going to just sweater just that brown part. Then I do stone placement around the cuticle area to end this live for you guys. I think it's a fun design for the holiday. For those of you guys are, you know, want to do sweater designs, I recommend you do it. It's a lot easier than you think. Um, don't be afraid to do it. I mean, like, at the end of the day, it's going to look nice regardless. You know, even if it's your first try, just stick with the concept and the product and you guys will do just fine and dandy. I wish I had my other other dryer, but I don't, so I cannot be picky and choosy right now, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and outline this part. Oh, shoot. It's okay, it's okay. Like I said, if you have issues controlling this brush, just switch to your whatever millimeter brush, uh, 50 millimeter if you have my brush collection. Gonna do this one thick. A little bit shaky. Okay. It took up time. I want to do this one thick. I don't have to do this color combination. I was gonna do it with black first, but I hate doing sweater nails with black because black gives this like lint feeling to it. And black, the lint, the, the powder crystallizes and shows up really, really, ugh. I don't like it. So this one I was doing for dots. Small surface area, so you know, you can always change up the design. Sometimes it's too small, so you just put little dots. And I'm gonna have a sprinkle. Remember, we already matte top coat this, so only stick to the gel polish. Do it a couple times. If you see it start getting wet again, it means that it's not soaked in enough. The more soaked in the, the, the clear acrylic is, the more texture you'll have, okay? Until you see it kind of get matted, then you're good to go. That's good, just a few times there. And we're, we're gonna cure now. 60 seconds, I recommend. Oh, a nice sample, sick. So I'm done with this, I'm gonna put this away. I'm gonna put pretty much everything away actually so I have space to do my stone placement. Look at my glove, already dirty, dirty it up. So we're pretty cured here. Dust off the excess. Got like a brown French. I recommend one of those like 
a toothbrush be nice to get all the corners a brown French now I think I have a few of these left I have a, I brought a bunch of colors in red green blue really good quality stones comes with shapes and also comes with brown six round stones probably seen a lot of people sell these um, I'm gonna use my wax dotter tool it has my wet my pen on the end and I'm gonna use my gem on this is non cleanse that means that when when this is cured um, it's gonna be smooth and not tacky so a lot of times you guys need Julie glue that's uh, sticky you don't want that I should have to use both edge use this grab a little bit of this Julie glue Apply it here, on the cuticle area. And use, what shape should I do? Mm, maybe a diamond shape. This one's nice. So I apply as I go. I'm gonna do two round beads here. So stone placement, you guys remember, like you have to have support stones. You can't just put a big ass stone on the nail out of nowhere, okay? It's not gonna stay on, okay? Be careful. I see a lot of people just put big stones on and just one single stone sitting there by itself. It's not gonna last. Okay, it needs, it needs support stone. That's why these, there's these like stone designs that you see people do. It's, yes, it looks great. And also, it's for support purposes also, okay? It's, it's there for a reason. And use different size stones also. You don't have to use the same stones, same size around. That's why this, this gives me the ability to switch sizes. And then now you can do however you want to do. I'm going to do a similar size on the side here. This is tied in. Oop, not enough glue there. I recommend if you have a mat nail to do this on top of mat. Don't try to apply it after, please. Don't put, don't try to apply a mat top coat after, okay? That's not how that works. This is upside down. So yes, you have to do all your sealing, all your work here. A nail like this will probably run the client maybe $15, $20. It's a lot of work. I see this, this jewelry glue is very sticky, so it's not gonna have these little bullion beads. It's not gonna run all over for you, okay? So I'm gonna take a thin layer of this. Just trace it along the side here. On both sides. And this is gonna be my support stones. This allows me to put in these little tiny beads that are aesthetically there for a reason, but also it kind of protects the size of the stones because some of these stones that are bigger stones like this middle one it's kind of elevated you know so it's, it's easy for it to get stuck or get caught on the hair the clothes and it comes off easier this gives it a little bit more protection so that it kind of takes away the elevation of the stone so you'll be able to protect it they look great. They're a pain to work with, but hey. There's a few ways to apply these. This is how I apply it. Tino has an, a cool way of doing it. Like just mixing it with top coat and just sticking on there. I like doing it like this way too. This 
So in the future, all my demos are gonna um, it's gonna be on TikTok. So please follow my TikTok, and you'll be able to and support the content there, and then you'll be able to see the demos and the tutorials on there. It's just easier for me to do on TikTok because I can use that video and repost it here, but I won't repost it here right away. I get my TikTok following a little bit. First tips, first titties. That looks actually really, really good. Dang, y'all. It's kind of like spur of the moment, but I really, really like how this is turning out. And yes, these are not gonna stay on forever, but like I said, it's gonna stay on as best as it can. I recommend doing this on top of a, a, a clear, so you can clear coat it. But if you do seal this incorrectly, you use the right products, they actually stand really long. Nothing like this is gonna last forever, you know that, you know? You gotta let your clients know, this is a wear and tear design. And reposition everything before you cure. Shake the position the way you want it. Actually, you could probably use another bead up here. Right in there. Come on. Yes, get in there. To match the other side. Push this stone up a little bit. There you go. Now you just gotta ask the client, hey, what's your cash at? So that's pretty much what we did today. I thank you guys for joining me. I have a messy, 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 messy counter right now. Definitely gonna have to clean up after, but um, these stones come in variety. Variety, variety. I have, oh, there's another, another product I wanted to show you guys. The concealer? Yes, I do. You should definitely, if you buy the stones, buy a bundle. This is a pin sealer. Probably you guys don't even know how to use this. There's a gel sealing in, sealant in there. So, when we have stones that are elevated, we have little cracks and nooks and cannies in there. Guess what? We're not gonna take a brush and put top coat in there, right? This is a small pin sealer with a clear gel that's non-tacky. And you just go into any edges or any spots and you just squeeze a little bit of it. Generally, this one, I don't have to do it because I already used my stones, but like I said, any, any crevices or anything that's lifted up, it squeezes gel into it and it seals it in there especially around the cuticle area. Sometimes we have little cracks right here, you know, uh, stones that, like you have put like big stones next to each other. There's like a little bit of elevation. If you, I'll show you guys the side profile here. You guys see how there's, even though that, that middle stone is elevated, it's protected by those smaller stones. So a client that can use in their hands, they're not gonna get caught right in that right away. So this pretty much just squeezes small monster gel into cracks and crevices and it fills it up and you just cure it and it seals it in. Extra protection there for those of you guys are using multiple big stones. For this one, I really didn't need it to, but there's a few others that I did, like these ones when I used a big stone. So this is a demo I did before. See this stone right here? Not every kit has it. I actually have it specially added on here. It's a big, big stone. This is actually, that's what makes it unique, I guess. Because not a lot of the com companies will add it there because it costs more for the bigger stones, but whatever. So there you guys go. A nice fall sweater design with some rhinestone placement. This will be like your, your money nail, pretty much. So they're not Swarovskis. Don't even ask. They're, they're quite.